aldol addition and aldol condensation are kind of just what happens when you take an aldehyde or a ketone in some solution and add a base like hydro hydroxide or alkoxide. The aldehyde or ketone reacts with itself. And in the aldol reactions we've seen so far, it's the same molecule acting as nucleophile and electrophile. For example, here we have acid aldehyde forming its enolate and adding to a neutral molecule of acid aldehyde to give this product of what we would call dimerization, the same molecule acting as nucleophile and electrophile, and a net addition reaction that kind of looks like 1 plus 1 equals 2, right? The same molecule acting in both roles. But the aldol reaction wouldn't be very synthetically useful if we were limited to just dimerization reactions like this, right? We'd like to be able to generate the enolate of one aldehyde, for example, and react it with the neutral version of a different aldehyde to create a structurally complex product with a new carbon-carbon bond. And naively, we might approach this by saying, okay, what will happen if I take, say, acid aldehyde, this molecule in red, and mix it up with propanol and a little bit of base? Let's say we want the enolate of acid aldehyde to add to neutral propanol. So we want acid aldehyde to be the nucleophile and propanol to be the electrophile. The problem here, well, the first problem is these are comparable in acidity, right? So hydroxide will deprotonate here and will deprotonate here, and we'll get a mixture of enolates. We'll get the enolate of acid aldehyde, that's shown here, and we'll get the enolate of propanol, shown there. And each of those enolates will react with the other reaction partner, but also with the neutral version, the conjugate acid, if you like, of themselves. Acid aldehyde will bump into, uh, acid aldehyde's enolate will bump into neutral acid aldehyde molecules and react to give dimer. And propanol's enolate will bump into neutral propanol molecules to give the dimer of propanol. And so if what we want to happen is just this reaction at the bottom, we're going to be sorely disappointed because this sort of naive just mix up the aldehydes with base approach is going to give a nasty mixture of products here. And more generally, if we try to take two ketohydes and just mix them up with base, we're going to be disappointed. These reactions where we're using two different aldehydes or ketones are called crossed aldol reactions. And to ensure that one aldehyde, let's say, reacts as the nucleophile and one reacts as the electrophile, we need to bias the reaction somehow so that these other reaction pathways that we don't want are either impossible, physically impossible, and we'll see what that looks like, or very thermodynamically disfavored relative to the path that we want to go down. We're going to look at three strategies in this video for getting around these problems with naive crossed aldol reactions. We're going to look at intramolecular aldol additions and condensations, where the formation of a five or six membered ring is what drives the reaction down a particular path. We'll look at non enolizable electrophiles, aldehydes primarily, although ketones can also serve in this role, where there are no alpha hydrogens, so it's not possible for that the electrophilic partner to form an enolate. So we can do this kind of naive, just mix up the reactants with base because the base only has one place that it can deprotonate. We'll also look at, at the approach of using a preformed enolate. It's actually possible to use LDA in conjunction with an aldehyde to form the enolate in 100% and through careful design of the experimental conditions, careful addition of the electrophilic aldehyde, we can achieve selective reaction of that preformed enolate as the nucleophile with that aldehyde that we're adding in slowly to a solution of the enolate. So these are the three strategies that we use to get around this problem with crossed aldol reactions. We're actually going to skip over the intramolecular approach. We'll see that in a couple of slides. This slide hits on the two, the, the second two approaches um, we looked at here. Enolization impossible for the electrophile and a preformed enolate. The reaction where enolization of the electrophile is not possible, it can't possibly form an enolate, has historically been called the Claisen-Schmidt condensation. And this is kind of an old school name for the reaction that you may come across. Conceptually, it's all about using an aldehyde or ketone that cannot form an enol or enolate. This means the base will only be able to deprotonate at one spot, and that will be the nucleophilic spot. And I, I've highlighted here three important aldehydes that are often used in Claisen-Schmidt condensations that do not have alpha hydrogens. The first is formaldehyde. Formaldehyde doesn't even have alpha carbons. 
there are hydrogens directly connected to the carbonyl carbon, and these are not acidic, right? These are not alpha hydrogens. They're connected directly to the carbonyl carbon, so this cannot form an enolate. And so propanol here will have to act as the nucleophile. This carbon is the only one with alpha hydrogens that can be deprotonated. So as the only alpha carbon, that will be deprotonated. That will be the nucleophilic side. And the only product form will be one in which this alpha carbon forms a bond to the carbonyl carbon of formaldehyde, which is electrophilic here. A second important aldehyde we use is benzaldehyde. Benzaldehyde does have one alpha carbon. However, that alpha carbon has no alpha hydrogens, right? No hydrogens connected to this carbon right here. So the only alpha... Uh, hydrogens under these conditions are again associated with propanol, so that will necessarily act as the nucleophile. In this particular case, notice, because we're forming an extended conjugated system with the phenyl ring, the double bond, and the CO double bond, this is going to go right to the condensation product even without heating in the presence of a base like sodium hydroxide. The final aldehyde worth keeping in mind here is pivaldehyde, or tert-butyl aldehyde if you like. Um, we have a tert butyl group linked to the formal or aldehyde group. And again, no alpha hydrogens right there, right? So this can only act as an electrophile as it cannot form an enolate. Propanol is going to be our nucleophilic partner with an enolate formed right there. And we're going to get, in this case, on heating the aldol condensation product with a tert butyl group linked to the beta carbon of this unsaturated aldehyde or enol. So this is the Claisen-Schmidt condensation. The whole idea is using a non-enolizable electrophile. These three important examples of these aldehydes are the most common that you'll see, although benzophenone, with two phenyl groups linked to a central carbonyl carbon, is an important ketone that can also do this. The directed aldol reaction takes advantage of a preformed enolate. We use LDA which is a kinetic base, remember extremely strong, so it's going to form that less substituted enolate selectively, to deprotonate an alpha carbon and form the enolate completely. We've got 100% of the enolate in solution before we even think about adding the electrophile. If we add that electrophile slowly, and you won't see this in reaction schemes, but there are some experimental quirks related to this reaction, but we then add the aldehyde after the enolate has been preformed, and this leads to a situation where the enolate reacts selectively as nucleophile, it doesn't equilibrate. It's not able to equilibrate. Using LDA ensures that, and so we don't actually form any enolate of propanol under these conditions, and propanol acts selectively as the electrophile. So you can do this with less substituted enolates. Can't use the more substituted enolate because any equilibration is going to get us back to this awful situation. So we have to avoid equilibration, get the less substituted enolate, 100% yield with LDA, and then typically an aldehyde is used here rather than a ketone, although I believe there are cases where ketones can be used as well. Substrates that contain two carbonyl groups can react in intramolecular aldol reactions, with one carbonyl group functioning as sort of the enolate side and the other carbonyl group functioning as the electrophile. And the key here is that five- and six-membered rings are the most stable ring sizes. So cyclizations that form five- or six-membered rings are going to be favored over other possible reaction pathways in general. Two examples of intramolecular aldol condensations are shown for you on this slide. I find when you're predicting products and analyzing this reaction, it is very, very helpful to number carbons. That's just, just going to give you kind of a language to talk about the various carbons, either with yourself or with a peer. And um, it'll help you see what's going on in the reaction. Now, one thing to note right off the bat is like all aldol condensations, these reactions are going to give off water. And we can number the carbons of the reactant like this. This is just one example of how we might number this with carbon 1 on the left, carbon 6 on the right. Notice that there are multiple possible enolates here. Carbon 6 and 1 are actually equivalent to each other by symmetry, but the enolate formed there is very different from the enolate formed at carbon 4. And carbons 3 and 4 are, again, equivalent by symmetry, and so an enolate here or here would be pretty much the same. But we could imagine carbon 3 which is an alpha carbon, linking up with carbonyl carbon 5. That's one possible product. That's not what's drawn here. What's drawn here involves a linkage between carbon 1 as the nucleophile, this alpha carbon, 
with carbon 5 as the electrophile. And we can see that linkage right here, and it's a double bond because of the condensation, this reaction, right? So the nucleophile was carbon 1, the electrophile was carbon 5, and the reason this product predominated was because we've got a five-membered ring in there, right? That's going to be much more favorable than the three-membered ring that would be generated if we used carbon-3 as the nucleophile. So that's what's going on in this intramolecular aldol reaction. Now, the second substrate is quite a bit bigger, and here we have the formation of a six-membered ring with, again, loss of a water molecule. So let's once again number the carbons. Now we have nine carbons here, and... Um, we see, for example, carbon-1 and carbon-3 are distinct alpha carbons. Either of these could add to carbonyl carbon-8. The two carbonyl groups are equivalent by symmetry, and so carbon-1 is pretty much equivalent to carbon-9. Carbon-7 pretty much equivalent to carbon-3. So we can imagine a linkage between carbon-3 and carbon-8. That's one possibility. We could imagine a linkage between carbon-1 and carbon-8. That gives another possibility. And here, you can sort of count ring sizes, right, using the numbering on the carbons before we even look at the product, right? We have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8-membered ring possibility if this carbon reacts. If we use carbon-3, that's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6-membered ring, and that's going to be favored over the 8-membered ring, of course. So what we see here in the product is that carbons 1 and 2 are sort of hanging off because carbon-3 was the one that supplied the electrons to establish the ring, right? So this double bond is the newly formed bond in the aldol condensation process, and it links up carbon-3 and carbon-8, and the other carbons are just numbered around as they sort of just serve as a tether from carbon-3 to carbon-8. Notice also that carbon-9 is hanging off as a methyl group, since this carbon was not directly involved in the reaction. It's just the methyl that happens to be linked to the electrophilic ketone carbon. So here again, we have a cyclization where a six-membered ring is favored. Condensation is occurring. We've got heat and a molecule of water is lost. But other than that, this is a great way to sort of bias the aldol reaction to go down a particular path, taking advantage of the relative stability of five-membered rings and six-membered rings. And one thing to note here, too, is in general, because... Uh, alpha carbon has to be involved as the nucleophile, the possible products will differ in ring size by two carbons. So you might have a three and a five situation as we did up here, or a six and an eight situation as we did here, or a four and a six, or a five and a seven, something along those lines. The, uh, the magic of alpha carbons being separated by the carbonyl carbon is what leads to that.